segment of the Canon 70D user guide, I want to take a detailed look at the buttons and dials on the exterior of the camera. Let's start in the top left corner with the on-off switch. Now, obviously the camera needs to be switched on for any of these buttons to work. Right below that we have the menu and the info button. The menu brings up the menu system and now the Canon 70D of course is touch enabled so that you can then touch any of the objects that you want on the menu. Pressing the menu again turns the menu off. To the right of the menu is the info button. That gives you a quick kind of summary of all of the settings in the camera. Uh, settings that you don't really see anywhere else other than going through many of the uh, menu items. Pressing info again will get you into the electronic level and then you can rotate and see that that shows how level the camera is. That's nice when you're trying to line the shot up just right and it will turn green on when your horizon is perfectly level. Pressing info again gives you information about the scene mode that you're currently on and your battery level. And the Q on the screen in the bottom left corner gives you some options um, for this mode. And pressing it again will bring you back. Pressing info again turns all of that off. We'll come back and look at some of those modes in a future segment. Now. In the top right corner, we have start and stop and a switch. The switch switches you from photo mode to video mode. When the switch is set to photo mode and you press start, that starts your live view function. Pressing it again stops your live view function. When you're in video mode, live view is always on. Pressing start will start the recording process. Pressing it again will stop the recording process. Just below that we have the Q menu button and that is basically the same as pressing Q on the screen when we cycle through those infos. It will give you any options you have for pressing on the screen for the current mode that you're in. Pressing it again will turn that off. Below that is the playback button. Pressing play will then take you to your last shot photo or video using the dial on the back you can then cycle through recent pictures and photos that you've taken. You can also use the inside of the dial by pressing right or left, and I'm just pressing right and left again so you were looking at the same two images, and now I'm pressing left and cycling through some recent photos and videos that I've taken. When you're on an individual image, um, there is very little that you can do until you press the Q button which will bring up some options and we'll go into these in a future segment as well. I'm just going to press Q again to take that away. If you are on a video it will let you know that by giving you the big play button in the middle of the video and you can press set to then get options to play that back and even trim it. We'll talk about those in a future video as well. While you're on, let's come out of here by pressing menu and left to get to a picture. When you're on a picture, pressing info will cycle through a variety of informational screens about that picture. In the top left corner, it tells you my shutter speed and my aperture, the file number, um, and which number this is in this group of photos and images on the card. Pressing info again gets you even more let you know that I shot this in RAW, the file size, the metering mode, that the flash did fire, the date and time, and a histogram information. We'll talk in detail about histograms uh, in the future. And now a colored histogram as well as our vet brightness value Instagram histogram and then back to just the image itself. Personally I find the most useful screen to often to be this one the histogram is very useful and I like to double check which file I'm shooting at. I like to double check my ISO and of course my shutter speed and aperture. If you're really trying to check for focus, then this uh, screen is often good because you get a slightly larger view. Now, when you're in this screen, you can press the plus key or the minus key, which we haven't gotten to on the back yet, and that will zoom you in. I'm continuing to press. You can also press and hold and it will zoom you in quite a bit um, so that you can double check focus. 
when you're zoomed in, you can then use the little directional pad to move around the screen to check the different areas for focus um, and quality. And then zoom back out. If you press the zoom out button when you're on a whole image, it will zoom out and give you thumbnails of all of the images that you have. And then you can use the directional pad to cycle through those. Uh, and then press set to bring one back up. Underneath the dial and the directional pad is the delete button. And that allows you to delete an individual image. And then you can use your finger to touch the erase or cycle over, select it, and press erase. And now that image has been deleted. I generally don't recommend deleting individual images unless it's a critical uh, running out of space type of situation. In general, after you download images to your computer, you should take time to reformat the card. And we'll talk about that in our tips and best practices segment of the 70D user guide. Now, when you're shooting, you do have the option of using the AF on as your back focus button. Again, this will be covered in our best tips and practices because this is an excellent button to get used to using. Um, it allows you to take several shots without having to refocus in between shots, which in some circumstances is going to give you much better results. And we'll talk about how to enable that too. To the right of that is your exposure lock, and that will allow you to meter. The camera decides what the correct exposure is, and then you can lock that and swing in a slightly different direction. One of the practical uses of this is in shooting a panorama where you want your exposure to be the same as you shoot multiple images of the horizon or the scene. And if you let the camera choose a different exposure each one, then you can end up with different pictures that do not line up nicely because one might be very bright, one might be very dark, whereas in this case they are going to um, do a nicer job of having a gradation across your scene. To the right of that is the button that allows you to select your focus points. Now we need to really be able to see inside inside here for this to work, but this allows you to select one of the multiple focus points or all of the focus points. And again, we'll return to this in our best practices and tips, but I often recommend that you choose which focus point you're using. Do not let the camera decide because the camera is not as smart as you and may choose something other than your main subject to focus on. Uh, and then your subject, the result would be that your subject may be more likely to be out of focus. And so that's something that you want to watch out for. Down below here at the very bottom is a button or a switch, we should say, this lock switch that has very little, I find, personally practical use. It allows you to lock this wheel so that it will no longer function. Um, and you may use that if you find yourself often um, messing with that wheel, but it doesn't change the rest of the uh, modes. Meaning if you're looking at pictures, the mode, the dial still works. It really only blocks it from changing your aperture when you're in manual mode. And we'll talk more about that soon. One last thing I want to point out to you on the back of the camera is this little light right here. That's your card reading indicator. Right after you take a picture, you should often see that light up briefly um, as the camera is in the process of writing to the card. Never, you should not eject your card during that time. It is fine to turn your camera off and back on. The, the camera is smart enough to continue to write to it until it is all done, but opening the battery door would interrupt that writing, possibly corrupt the latest image, and in extreme circumstances, possibly corrupt the whole card. So you wanna be very careful. And the same goes for removing the battery. You should not be removing the battery or taking the card out while that indicator light is running. If you've just shot a burst of images, you will see that. Um, light actually stay on for a longer period of time because the camera has written images into its buffer and then it needs to take a little bit longer to write them to the card. Now, uh, as I said over here on the side is the SD card slot. Let's take a look at the top of the camera now.
first part of the top of the camera that we're going to look at is the mode dial. Now this is a locking mode dial which means it doesn't turn unless you hold down the button in the middle of the dial and then that allows you to rotate it. It will rotate 360 degrees meaning you can continuously rotate it all the way around. There isn't any stop point in going back. In a future video we will talk in detail about which each of these modes mean. Automatic though is pretty straightforward. The camera chain makes all of the decisions about the photo um, and simply you just half press the shutter to focus and then press it all the way down to take a picture. My personal favorite mode is P which will not pop the flash up until you tell it to and it gives you a few more options including being able to select that center focus point and we'll go into that in more detail soon. Over here we have our LCD screen. The top row corresponds to the button that is above it. So in our top left corner we have our autofocus mode. The button above changes our autofocus mode by pressing this button and then changing the dial. You can switch between one shot, AI focus, and AI servo. And we'll talk about more of those in detail soon. The drive mode will cycle through your various shutter op options. High speed, uh, lower speed, silent, etc. For instance, let's just put it on high speed for a second. And you can see what that sounds like. And then we can switch it to our lower silent drive mode. And again, just by pressing the button, and then why only that section of the LCD screen is lit up, we can rotate through our options, and the self timer is there as well. Next button over is ISO. Pressing that and then moving this dial will allow us to quickly change our ISO, and rotating it all the way down, we'll put it on auto where the camera then decides the best ISO for the situation. Next option over is our metering mode and that will cycle through our spot, center weighted and partial metering modes. Again, all of this will be talked about soon. To the far right is a little light. Shooting at night, you pressing that lights up the backlight of the LCD screen. You can also see this is where you can see your exposure lock and your autofocus selecting buttons uh, more clearly that correspond to these two buttons on the back. Up in the front is another way to select through your different focus modes. So this was the brains of the camera deciding how to focus. Now this is what area of the screen you want to use to focus. You can do center weighted, sorry, not center weighted. You can do uh, center point. You can select an individual point. You can select areas of the screen to focus. All of that will be covered. And then in front of that is, of course, the shutter button. On the side of the Canon 70D, we have two little rubber flaps. The top one reveals the mic jack. Below that, it's a very similar looking port, but that is for plugging in a remote. It's slightly smaller than your standard mic. And over on the right, we have little rubber flaps covering our HDMI out and our standard USB where you can plug in to read cards out um, or hook this to an external device that then can control it. We also have our little speaker here. Now on the front of the camera, on the front of the camera we have our flash pop-up button. One quick word, I get a lot of questions about whether or not my Canon 70D is broken because I hear a slight rattling noise. There are small metal hinges that when the flash is folded down are loose inside that housing and you can hear a slight metallic clinking sound if you shake the 70D when the pop-up flash is down. Don't worry, your Canon 70D is not broken. Pushing this button will in fact pop the flash up. Below that is our lens release button. To take a lens off, you simply press that down and rotate the lens counterclockwise. To put a lens back on, you do not need to hold that button down. You simply line up white dot to white dot or red dot to red dot if you're using an EF lens and rotate it clockwise. Mini lenses have two switches on the side autofocus, manual focus, and stabilizer on or off. Quick note, if you're taking pictures on a tripod, your stabilizer should be off. Hidden below the lens on the right hand side of the camera is your depth of field preview button. We'll come back and talk about that at some future point.
We have a small light here that blinks to let you know when your self timer is on. And also on this grip, right where my thumb was, is the small infrared port that will uh, receive signals from an infrared remote triggering the camera. That's not the same as when you're using Wi-Fi. You don't have to worry about that port and whether or not it can see your infrared signal. On the bottom of the camera is the tripod socket. And on mini lenses, you have a small lock switch. This lock switch will keep the lens from uh, moving into a telephoto range. Uh, why many people like to use it is it avoids lens creep. That is when the lens is kind of hanging by your side around your neck, um, instead of it slowly uh, drifting out further and further and further, the lock switch will keep it uh, nice and compact. One last button on the back that I want to show you before we finish up this tour of the external features is our diopter adjustment. This allows people with glasses and other means of corrective vision to focus the viewfinder to be more accurate for them. And you simply do that by rotating this little dial. And what I find is that it can accidentally get bumped sometimes and then you can look through and the camera will tell you you're auto focusing correctly. You'll get the little beep in confirmation, but it will look very unfocused to you. The easiest way to fix this is to focus on something about four to five feet away using the camera's center focus point so you know exactly what it's focusing on. And then once the camera confirms that you have focused on that, without moving the camera, simply rotate the dial until it looks in sharp focus to you looking through the viewfinder. This was a tour of the external buttons and dials on the Canon 70D. More user guides are coming. Thanks for watching.